in my own linear algebra course, I see that students often find it hard to solve the exercises where they have to prove something. And I understand that perfectly, since these exercises require different skills than the exercises where you only need to compute something. These textbook exercises, which ask you to prove something, are there of course for a reason. In fact, for several reasons. First of all, they force you to look very critical at your own reasoning. Is every single step correct? And a second reason is that these exercises often require you to think of the new concepts or concepts which just have been covered. Okay, fair enough, but how to answer those exercises? What are the ingredients of a good proof? Let us look at that at a relatively easy example to see what is needed in a correct proof. We will look at the area of a triangle. Okay, you know what the area of a triangle is. It equals one half times the height times the base. So that's the area of a triangle. But why? How do you prove it? Well, first we are going to look at a special case. We are going to look at the right triangle and we are going to prove that the formula is correct in the case of a right triangle with height h and base b1. So we have to prove that the area of the triangle equals one half times h times b1 in this case. If we have done this case, we haven't proved it in this general case, of course, but this is the first step. So first we prove it in the special case. How are we going to do that? Well, we have our right triangle over here. And we flip it and we add another one, same one, over there. Then we have a rectangle. And now can we can use an axiom which tells us that the area of a rectangle equals the length times the width. So the area of the rectangle is, by definition, as you want, h times b1. But now I know that the area of my rectangle is twice the area of a triangle. So I know 2 times the area of my triangle equals h times b1, and I can solve for the area of the triangle, which equals 1 half times h times b1, which concludes the proof, and then we often write a small square over here, like that. Or, if you have done Latin, you can write QED, quod erat demonstrandum, and that is what had to be proven. Now we have proven this theorem about right triangles, and we can use that result to prove our formula in the general case. So we go back to the general case. We have our h here, and we divide the big B into a B1 and a B2. But now we have two right triangles, the first one here, with height h and base B1, and the second one over here, with height h and base b2. But now we can use our previous result, which says that the area of the big triangle equals the first one plus the second one, of course. And I know the area of the first one, because it is a right triangle, triangle equals one half h b1. I can add the second one, ha one half h times b2. And then we can take out the one half and the h, uh, because they come in both terms. So we get a one of h times b1 plus b2, and b1 plus b2 equals b, the b over there. So the area of my triangle equals one half times h times b. And that concludes our proof for the triangle. So what is essential over here? We only use either an axiom over here, or something what we had already proven over here and over there. That's what we can use in order to prove something new. That's one essential thing. The second is, we should be able to follow every step. Every step should be correct. You should be able to verify every step, every single step. 
and that's the second ingredient. And this kind of reasoning, well, that takes some practice, of course, you cannot do this right away, but that's why we have all those exercises which ask you to prove something just in order to practice with this technique 